A large dormant black hole has been detected less than 2,000 light years from Earth. It is the first time a black hole in, which was formed by an imploding star has been spotted so close to home. And the discovery surprised scientists. To find out why, I'm joined now by Professor Joss Bland Hawthorne from the University of Sydney. Good morning, Professor. Good morning to you. OK, so first of all, what makes a black hole dormant? Black holes are massive objects, so dense, so, so, so dense that not even light gets away from them. But you do see their presence by things that spin around them, like gas that spins around them or stars that spin around them. So we think of a dormant black hole as one where there's nothing going on. You've got stuff that's spinning around it, but it's not firing up the black hole, to, causing this thing around it to, to explode or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if it's not stealing matter from a nearby star and therefore at least helping produce some light in its destruction, that presumably makes it very, very hard to see. Yeah, they're extremely hard to detect. And in fact, we detect them by the, the effect they have on things around them. So we detect black holes which are truly massive, you know, a million or more times the mass of our sun. The centre of our galaxy has one of those and we detect it because of the motion of stars that zip around it. We also see black holes with a mass of our, sun, of our sun, not a million times the mass of the sun, but just one solar mass, uh, and they're quite common, in fact. But what we don't see is this missing link. Where are the black holes between one and a million? There should be black holes which are 10 solar masses, or 100, or 1,000, or even 10 or 100,000, but we just don't find them very, very at all. They seem to have gone missing, except to say that a recent machine has detected their presence but not actually seen, seen them uh, in space. Mm -hmm. So uh, roughly how big is this uh, black hole and, and why exactly has it excited scientists? For a, for a number of reasons. So let me take you back to the ESA Gaia satellite that launched about 11 years ago. Mm. It detects tiny motions of the millions of stars, billions of stars around us. And every now and then you see stars jiggle around backwards and forwards, and it's because they're in a dance with another star, a, sort of a pair of stars, a binary stars going around each other. But every now and then you see a star that's jiggling around, there's nothing jiggling with it. It's sort of a, it's got a black, a dark companion, and we know that these are the stars in, in, in the presence of a, of a black hole, spinning around a black hole. And that black hole that we've discovered with the Gaia satellite is 33 times the mass of the sun. It's sort of like a missing link between mm -hmm. one and a million. It's not, we're looking for more, of course, which are even bigger than that. Uh, and this particular black hole is extraordinary because um, it seems to have fallen in to the Milky Way from outside. It was formed in a small galaxy that was in, in orbit around our Milky Way, and that little galaxy fell in and brought this black hole with it, which makes this black hole very ancient. Mm -hmm. uh, we think the black hole is at least 12 billion years old, maybe even older. In a universe, that's 14 billion years old. Wow. Uh, do we know how this type of black hole forms? Is it the remnants of a relatively large star? That's an extremely profound question, which is at the very heart of research today. Mm. We actually think that most of these stars, most of the black holes, whether they be low mass or very high mass, were seeded shortly after the Big Bang. Something very big collapsed and formed the first seeds of a black hole. And the proof in this particular case of that is it's in orbit around a star that is itself very ancient. The, the, it, this black hole, the, what we saw with the Gaia satellite was a star. That star is very poor in, um, in elements heavier than helium hydrogen, which makes it very, very ancient. And in fact, so this black hole has probably existed for 10, 12 billion years orbiting this uh, black hole, and, and we think the black hole was once itself a very massive star, which collapsed to form this seed black hole. Uh, and then, the, and they, so, so what you've had is billions of years of a black hole orbiting this ancient star. So, it, so that seems to hang together with the idea that these black holes, especially the massive black holes, are formed very early on in the universe. Uh, Professor, just before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about a different story. Uh, NASA has confirmed that an object that crashed into a home in Florida early, th earlier this month was part of the International Space Station. Uh, how, what's the likelihood of space junk making it through the atmosphere and then actually landing in a populated area? Extremely rare, to be mm. honest with you. I mean, we have a lot of stuff. There's a huge amount of junk in, in low Earth orbit, as we call it, sort of up to 300 kilometres above the Earth, and we rely on the atmosphere to burn this stuff up. We deliberately put up, I, I'm, I'm part of a group that's put up CubeSats, little satellites, and they literally come down and burn up on the atmosphere. So we rely on most things burning up, and I think NASA had assumed 
that these pallets of uh, batteries would themselves burn up. But every now and then, a small fragment, fragment somehow survives. It's less than a kilogram in mass. And this particular one hit a house in Florida, which is extremely unlikely. Most of the, most of the stuff that survives goes into the ocean. Well, that is good to, good to hear. Uh, Professor Joss Hawthorne, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning on ABC News.